You're listening to the Living in Bosnia and Herzegovina podcast. It's a, a murky day, a muggy day really, uh, in Banja Luka. Um, we've had days and days of roasting hot sunshine. Um, well, I'm looking out the window here. Um, the grass resembles a desert, right? It's been so hot. And then we've had rain and now we have this muggy thing so everybody's walking around feeling quite sticky but I'm fortunate today um, after chasing a guy that I've been trying to get in touch with actually for months he doesn't know that um, but I've managed to catch up with him today his name is Nemanja Knezovic he's going to tell us uh, exactly what he does but recently you've heard me talk about culture uh, and the way that in this particular region and I suppose it's like other places in the world, it's not unique to Banja Luka, that culture and tradition is under threat. And Nemanja works in a very traditional environment, in a cultural environment, uh, and he's got some particular views uh, on those topics concerning Banja Luka uh, and the people, especially in the north of the country, in the Republic of Srpska. So, Nemanja... First things, I could ask you a million questions about yourself and we could spend four hours uh, just chatting that alone. So here we go. Who is Nemanja Knezovic? Well, if I could say it in short, I can say that maybe a keeper of tradition, uh, of tradition of the people from this region, uh, because uh, I'm 32 years old, first of all, but I'm in, in tradition, in, in folklore from my 10th year. Uh, as a small child, I started to dance in Ensemble Veseli Maslesha, uh, which became my second home, uh, beside, of course, the normal home I have. Uh, we like to say that we are one big family uh, with a very positive uh, target in our job, uh, of course, to uh, keep our tradition alive uh, and to show it uh, to domestic people, definitely, who may be kind, part of them forgot it. And, of course, to the world uh, that maybe hadn't met us in the right way uh, as we would like to be to be met. Uh, so, uh, I'm a keeper of tradition, at least one of the soldiers of, keeper of, of keepers. <laughs> All those years ago, when, when you were five and you started um, dancing with the ensemble here, was it something that every child was expected to do or every child would do? Uh, when you start dancing and when you start meeting tradition, you are not aware of that. The, that was the suggestion of my father, to be honest to say. Uh, in that period, uh, especially boys are interested in football or basketball. Me personally was interested very much in football. And uh, I have a younger brother, of course. And father came one day and he told us, listen, guys, uh, I, I, I will bring you to one place and you, you will like that. And we'll, we're, we were asking, like, what, what about is that? It's a folklore. And we were, oh, no, what folklore? That's for the girls. So that's not for the boys. But he said, uh, first we go, you, you see that, and then we talk after that. Uh, from the first moment uh, when, I, when I entered the, the, the uh, space for the, for the uh, rehearsals or for the trainings, as we say, uh, I saw the other picture definitely. Uh, I forgot football very, very soon. <laughs> I mean, I play, I play it even now, but only as a as a part of the training. Uh, but folklore became and tradition became my life. Uh, you met uh, some normal people or kids in that period. Uh, you met some new friendships, uh, and the most important thing we met our traditional dances and uh, traditional music and singing uh, which we maybe didn't know enough uh, before we came here through the, all these years uh, from year to year uh, you you uh, how to say you fall in love with your tradition you meet it more and more as you are older and uh, there is something inside you which uh, became uh, present and that's it uh, uh, like it's from the nature. Uh, I want to keep this. I want to show this to the world, and I want to keep this for my kids. Not only for the world, of course, but primarily for my kids, because that's our that's our signature. 
you know, and not only uh, from people that are in this po moment in the ensemble, only from the generations and generations who were, uh, uh, that lived that way in the villages <laughs> before the ensemble ensembles existed, of course. Uh, so uh, maybe as you become older and older, you are much more in love with your tradition and the job uh, we were we are doing actually. We were talking just before we started recording about what it must have been like maybe 200 or 250 years ago in a village and to turn around to somebody who was dancing and say, hey, do you know that in a couple of hundred years there's only going to be ensembles doing this? They, they would actually, I suppose, be quite shocked to see that, the, you know, that tradition was going to develop in, in such a way. But the history of folklore uh, in the Balkans, it, it does go back generations really doesn't it yeah uh you said it right uh maybe two or three hundred years ago nobody believed that there will be necessary to to make some ensembles to keep uh, something they live every day uh not only two three hundred years ago you, you still have that situation in in some villages when you come there people are still living tradition we we we, we like to say that they are living tradition because it's still normal in some villages near our uh, banja luka uh, that people met like no special reason they're they're just taking a coffee or something and they sing songs you know uh tradition of dancing is uh, lost a little bit I mean in living tradition, uh, but that's why ensembles became so important. Uh, in one period uh, of modern e e era, let's say like that, after after the 20th century, um, uh, somehow new uh, wave of uh, new tradition came on these areas also. And uh, my, my opinion, it was like people were like they felt maybe ashamed ashamed of, of, of their uh, costumes, of their uh, uh, songs, or of their uh, dances. Maybe they thought that's not interested anymore. Rock and roll came after that, <laughs> of course. Uh, and in that moment, uh, ensembles appeared. Because uh, luckily, I say luckily because of uh, nowadays, there were some uh, uh, ethnomusicologists, people, and ethnochoreologists, uh, which uh, saw that necessary to keep the ordinary parts of the costumes, the parts of the dances, I mean steps, and to keep uh, the old instruments alive and the old songs and the melodies. Uh, after that, uh, the, this type of tradition became very popular, especially in formal Yugoslavia, because you had situation uh, in a big companies that were uh, uh, present in that days. Uh, the workers were these people from these villages, and maybe due, during the work they started some sings uh, songs uh, and and uh, maybe even dances <laughs> after the work. And uh, the first ensembles are made as a part of the of the uh, big companies, uh, and after th these years, it became more and more uh, uh, how to say uh, uh, some part of professional uh, uh, doing that. And uh, these workers were also the part of the dancing ensembles and the singing groups. Uh, and uh, after that, we had, uh, uh, of course some situations when the companies didn't uh, stay alive, they fall apart, but the ensembles still are alive and, and doing what we are doing. There's, to me, as a foreigner, as, as somebody that is very much an outsider looking in, there seems to be so much variation in, 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 the, in the region. I remember being somewhere, I can't remember exactly where it was now, but there was um, a, a lot of groups dancing um, from all uh, former republics uh, of, of the former uh, Yugoslavia, the difference in costumes was astounding. The difference in dancing uh, was astounding. And I was actually lost for words, and I turned around and asked people, why is this happening? And I now know that it's a dance from Glamoc where there's no uh, music uh, um, at all. So this heritage is very complicated, isn't it? 
Well, it is. It's very complex. Um, I apologize in advance because my English maybe is not so good. Uh, I haven't used it for, for many years because I don't have often chance, but I will try to explain it as much as uh, possible in a, in a good way. Um, it's very... There, there, yes, there are very different types of not only costumes, uh, types of the culture, uh, especially in formal Yugoslavia. For example, our ensemble Veselin Maslesha on on our repertoire there is a uh, different types of dances uh, from the old countries of the of the Yugoslavia uh, unfortunately after the war happenings in 90s uh, most of our choreographies are ori- the orientation is on the our ca- ca- uh, country of bosnia and herzegovina uh, but uh, what is a very important thing that that i always try to explain uh, even to some of uh, my colleagues, uh, we have so much, let's say, treasury, treasury in these uh, dances, songs, costumes, in tradition completely, uh, that it's still not used and showed uh, the right way. Uh, you cannot find in every country so many different costumes. Even this is not only by the region differences. The, 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 there is difference in the same village. By one side of the hill and the other side of the hill, even in the song or the step or the costume, uh, that's something that even uh, professional people from the museums or, or uh, academy are still investigating and uh, try to make at least photos and the recordings uh, of these differences. Uh, I think that. Uh, of course, it's very important that the institution, republic institutions, uh, stand beside this and say, okay, we have to do it in the right way. Uh, at least while we have still the older people that remembers the differences and uh, maybe make some old costumes and have some old costumes to show or the instruments and, uh, and the things like that. Uh, so... Uh, in our ensemble, we, we are very proud of that. We have uh, one of the biggest uh, uh, costume uh, funds uh, at, at, at the former Yugoslavia. We have, uh, in one moment, we can uh, have uh, 1,000 people in the costumes. Uh, and as we say, about 1,200 costumes, uh, complete costumes we have in our in our. Uh, Basement. So uh, every year we try to meet some new village, even we have met a lot of them, but to meet some new village, new costume, new uh, type of uh, singing or dancing or anything the old people remember, to record it, uh, to write the, the, all the things about that and to keep it in our archive, of course, and to show it on the stage when we, when we have concerts. You know, that there's two major um, ensemblers here in Banja Luka, yours, Mashlesa, and Chayavet. Um And again, as a foreigner, I'm, I'm wa- walking here today. Um, I walk past, um, yeah, it used to be a, a nightclub here called Rudi. Yeah. Uh, then I come up to the traffic lights and turn right, and there's the bus, the, the memorial to uh, Mashlesa. And I'm suddenly thinking to myself, what have two people's heroes uh, from the anti-fascist war of the, the 1940s what, what has that got to do with folklore um, and I know it's a, a, a silly question most probably but here in Banja Luka you, you've actually named two really traditional activities um, after two pretty exceptional people Well, uh, first of all, I have to uh, say that there is one more big ensemble. It's uh, older even than Maslesha and Trajavec. It's uh, Pelagic. Uh, They're old nearly 100 years. So they are after the First World War. They they, they are made also uh, as a part of uh, of a company that time. Uh, But after that, uh, of course, uh, Maslesha and Trajavec are... uh, we are named, as you said, by the national heroes of the Second World War. Uh, Chayavets has the name because also of the company that was appeared in that time and was making parts for the aeroplanes. 
Uh, Maslesha actually is named especially because of the reason that uh, our hero Veseli Maslesha is from his born is ba- in Banja Luka and he died in those y- in that years of the of the war and uh, as Maslesha is uh, established uh, three years after the ending of the war uh, some smart people remembered in that time okay it would be normal and very positive thing to do to give the name of the ensemble to uh, of, of our national hero who was actually born here and 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 spend some life here uh so uh we never talk about the differences of uh, political or or uh, other type uh, of differences in uh, through our history uh we won't lose the time to talk about the politics now because i think tradition is more important uh, uh what is the most important thing that maslesha already became a type of the brand of the of the city and of uh, our country uh as i mentioned we are in 74th year of the existence and uh, during that time we made a lot of for our tradition and we f- for me it's maybe more even imp- more important that we uh make some normal surroundings for the young generations to grow up because here we are all the same it's not important if somebody's father is a millionaire or somebody's father is working for i don't know 200 euros salary uh their kids are in the same conditions here they learn the same things they keep the same uh, let's say value valuable things from our tradition and when we travel somewhere uh we eat the same food so uh, we sleep in the same beds uh it's not important how much money his father or mother has we are we are one big family here who lives in the same way as the others uh so i think it's very uh, important that we continue with that type of work beside keeping tradition alive to uh learn the new generations that uh, have to respect our friends or or uh, or neighbors never mind uh to help each other and it, what is more important thing is we are until we are united we can achieve very positive and very great things if we separate that's not the same anymore uh so un- until i'm here i will try to do my best with my colleagues to make that uh, in the future of course the five year old nemanja whose father said i'm going to take you somewhere and you're going to enjoy it um he brought you and introduced you to this the five year old nemanja today out there in the streets we'll call him nemanja Yeah. who's out there in the streets um at the moment how do the youth today arrive at the door of the ensemble uh that's one of the topics that i was speaking with our friends from netherlands that were here and you saw that of course um uh, we have to follow the civilization let's say or some technical changes and achievements of course uh it's not the same to show to the youth uh today what is folklore and how to call them to to be part of us and 20 years ago uh 20 years ago the the, the situation was like okay you have a chance to go to see the concert you like it or you don't like it the other t- type is as in my case your father knows the man who is working here and he said that's positive for the kids uh, even for the physical uh, active activity uh, bring them two three trainings to see if they accept that okay let's try on that way uh, today we uh, we are trying to do it uh, through the social media uh, through the facebook or, uh, or or instagram or youtube and definitely of course concerts are always present there because uh, we we started one festival 6 years ago when i came here i was like okay we have some regular traditional concerts unfortunately we don't have a big hall for uh, too much audience uh, except the summer stage at the castle fortress and then i said okay i will make one summer festival because we can receive at least 1000 people there and there will be grandfathers and grandmothers with their grandchilds or fa- or uh, parents with their kids 
uh, the kids will see in the live, wow, I would like to be that. I, w- I would like to be there in five years, in ten years, I would like to do that. As they see the football, football matches and something, I say to my colleagues, okay, we have to make some uh, cooperation with the televisions uh, that folklore and tradition are more present at the screen like sports and something like that. Because I think, of course, I respect sports. I used to play uh, football. Uh, but we now have to make the space, media space, for the tradition and the, for the folklore. Uh, even some uh, uh, universities of the physical education were suggesting to their uh, students, like, okay, you should go and uh, dance folklore at least for a few months because of your moves and uh, body, uh, how to say, preparations for the trainings. Uh, folklore is not easy <laughs> if somebody thinks it's easy it's not easy at all uh, you have to dance uh, the concert is mo- at least uh, 90 minutes or, or more and uh, what is problem <laughs> let's say problem uh, the costumes are not easy as the equipment for the football you know you, of, very often you have uh, uh, many kilos of the costumes on, on yourself and you have to dance very, very, uh, very hard and tough dances. So uh, I think that uh, we have to follow some uh, modern media possibilities. We cannot stay in uh, 90s or 2000s years of, uh, of uh, marketing, let's say. And one of the plans for the future is uh, to try to make some uh, additional funds for the marketing and to be present at the media and the televisions. So I, I, I think that's one of the ways to show the kids uh, how it looks on the stage. And after that, they will learn how it's behind the scenes. <laughs> so there is enough time for that also. I was sat at the back in, uh, in the fortress at the castle when uh, the... Um, last evening of Banyaluk uh, Ethno Days was, Mm -hmm. and uh, Afi Dirksen from the Netherlands showed her film. Two things that struck me, uh, and I'd like your your thoughts on that. One was the um, reactions from local Banyaluka people around me who without exception, were saying, I didn't know that, I didn't know that, I didn't know that, I didn't know that. And the fact that Banyaluka actually gave Afi a standing ovation, which is, um, in the rest of Europe, a pretty amazing accolade. We won't talk about the standing ovation. She deserved that. But why is it, do you think, that people from Banyaluka or the, the other guests from around was saying, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. There must surely be a gap in education of people and where they've come from. Uh, I often think about that, especially when uh, some type of manifestation, as as was the Banyaluka Ethno Days, uh, happens. And then I see how much our, our domestic people don't know about its culture. Uh, that's very negative thing. But to be honest, I still think there are m- many, many uh, consequences of the uh, communism. Communism made some different shape of keeping tradition, only what they wanted to show. That was the political type of uh, that period. Uh, but also we are... Gi- of course we are we are guilty because of that when i say we i mean on my uh, uh, citizens and uh, and uh, uh, every citizen of this republic the thing is uh, what i was suggesting to some uh, authorities let's say uh, good exa- a very good example is bulgaria uh, they have a, a subject in the schools tradition that is the only way to keep it more alive and not to forget tradition, besides uh, doing a folklore. Uh, they respect their tradition. They have a regular uh, class at the school, uh, what is only about the tradition. Uh, unfortunately, as I said, uh, in this period, I, uh, somehow I feel that even 
20 or 30 years after the war, people now are interested to meet more about their tradition. And sometimes, as you said, they say, oh, I didn't know that. Uh, why that happens? I'm not sure. Maybe we accepted. I like to say for our for our country and our people, not only from Bosnia, even from the region, uh, we we accept the foreign influence very easy, and uh, of course it's okay to accept something. I mean, music or something normal, culture generally, but we forget our culture very easy also. That's not good. Uh, I don't say in the name of the ensemble, of course, my job in an ensemble is uh, opposite of that. But as a, as a part of the people that we are talking about, is it's that some very awkward situation. I'm not sure why is that. Uh, maybe it's influence of the foreign marketing much stronger than, than our domestic. Um, I respect, also, of, of course, uh, other types of the of the dances, uh, I don't know, hip hop or or Latino dances. That's very positive, and I think Banja Luka concretely needs that types of schools also. <coughs> also, but uh, we may not uh, think about our tradition that it's not at least attractive and interesting because every people came here, and uh, every festival where we went to, uh, we only received uh, received very positive. Uh, uh, reactions of the audience. Uh, you mentioned the dances from from Glamuch, for example. Uh, not too much people know that that it is the only the only uh, uh, let's say deaf dance. We have many more uh, deaf dances. If we talk about this, the reason about that is connected with uh, 500 years ago and when the Ottomans were here and the occupation. And for example. Uh, if there is a wedding in the village, they couldn't dance too loud or, or play music or something like that because they will come there and take the bride and that problems. Uh, from from this period, there are some part of, of our history and, of course, the type of the dances are, are played in that way. Uh, but uh, I think now we have to use these uh, modern abilities uh, first of all, to meet our people with our own tradition, and after that, uh, of course, to continue what we have done for many uh, decades to to go through the world and to be the uh, like s some type of embassy of our tradition. You were talking about festivals, um, festivals, not only to run them but to actually perform at them, um, takes an incredible amount of effort. You don't want to be doing the same thing every time. Uh, and it's only recently, uh, and I said to my wife, Tamara, who used to dance, um, who comes up with the ideas? And she says, hey, this is all, this is carefully planned. This is choreography. This is just like Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers back in the days of, of Hollywood, where you actually thought it was all being done off the cuff, but they'd rehearsed and rehearsed and rehearsed those steps. How difficult is it for you and your choreographer to keep coming up with new ideas, variations on a theme. Uh, you described, or your wife described it very well. Uh, it's a process. Uh, my plan is uh, to make some type of documentary on that topic. Uh, it's very easy to see something on the stage. The stage is just uh, the final step of the whole process, which uh, uh, regularly is... is at least for 10 to 12 months preparations for this type of concerts. Uh, how we do it in Maslesha is uh, every year at the beginning of the year we have a meeting of the old choreographers, of the old groups and me of course, and we discuss, okay, for this year, like a calendar of the dances, we play this, 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 this and this choreography because we are very... I, let's say <laughs> rich with the, with the choreographies. We have around 60 choreographies on our, of our repertoire. Of course, you cannot play them in the, in the same year, but we try to make the plan which will be played and danced in in, in some particular year. Of course, uh, uh, every dancing group has uh, their rehearsal uh, during the week, twice a week, sometimes uh, three times a week. And we are, uh, of course, starting the preparations 
maybe some choreography hasn't been danced for a few years and dancers a little bit forget it. But the choreographer, uh, choreographer does a very good job. Uh, he has good preparations, definitely, I have to say that. Uh, he prepares himself first. Uh, we finish our talkings about that and then he goes to the uh, to the room for the dances and they are starting from from step by step, step by step and dancing, dancing, practicing uh, for months and months before the concert and then we make scenario for the concert. Of course, we ha you have to do it at the way that uh, audience doesn't feel uh, bored, you know, because there are some slower dances, there are some uh, faster dances, there are some dances without the music and there are some dances with music. So uh, you have to find the line that this type of the dances without the music has the same reaction to the audience <laughs> as this with the music. So, of course, you see now put one without the music, then one or two with the music. And then after uh, you, you, you make your steps by, by the concert scenario. Uh, concerts are mo mostly about 19 minutes uh, of, of length. Uh, in that period, it's enough to show ten, sometimes more choreographies by the concert. Uh, many practicing is is necessary to to do it uh, without the mistakes. Of course, there are always some small mistakes, but nothing so big uh, that can make a lot of trouble to us or doesn't look good on the on the stage. Uh, so I have to say, the biggest part in that uh, work uh, uh, is for the choreographers. Uh, and for now, I'm happy that I have that uh, type of choreographers. They are for 20 years in, in Maslesha. First of uh, Mr. Goran Pupac is the choreographer uh, of the first team, <laughs> to, to call it like that. But also the other choreographers are doing a great job. And uh, uh, we have good uh, team chemistry, uh, which makes us to, 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 re uh, to reach this type of results. It wasn't until recently, and I've, I've seen a... I'm, I'm not an expert, but I've seen quite a lot of folklore and, and dancing in, in the few decades I've been here. But it wasn't until recently that I s said, wow, this is storytelling. Because every, every time an ensemble comes on the stage, there is a story to it, isn't there? Yes, in, uh, yes definitely. Uh, there is always some topic of the choreography, what you want to show. What, it, uh, uh, what is the story of the choreography, as you said? Uh, of course, uh, there were weddings, there were other things through our history that were uh, celebrated. Uh, unfortunately, there were some bad things through our history that are um, shown in the songs. And then you think about it and you say, okay, I could make a... I, I, I speak now in the name of the choreographer. Uh, for example, we have... Uh, Choreography from Kozara, uh, where is shown the traditional song that is made many, many years ago, uh, where the mother lo lose their sons in the war. Uh, she, of course, cries because of that, but after that, the dance starts again after her crying, and it shows how our people survived the hard times, and uh, we didn't... Uh, only stood on the crying, crying, but we continued and we fight further. Uh, of course, there are some very positive uh, choreographies like weddings uh, types and something like that, how it was done in that time uh, when you couldn't just uh, arrange your girl on your own, but you had to go to ask her father <laughs> for her hand. Sometimes you are rejected, sometimes you are accepted. Uh, but the, the thing is, definitely every choreo choreography has its story. Uh, and the year before this uh, COVID situation, we made an interesting concert at the National Theatre at the end of the year. Uh, second part of the concert was made like uh, no stops be, uh, besides the, the, the choreographies. We make it like some collage, as we say. Uh, it, the second part of the concert was about 50 minutes uh, long and we make it like uh, from like by the regions of the Republic of Srpska we start by one uh, region of course not the co complete choreography the part of the choreography when the people dance first 
they just go outside of the of the stage but the other stage and the other region uh, other costumes our uh, other songs came along and continues for uh, for to keep all the, the, the uh, to show all the regions uh, with different steps with different tradition with different costumes that was one very uh, how to say uh, rich part uh, of uh, our uh, performing and it's uh, if you want to see it you, it's possible to find it on the youtube channel of our ensemble uh, i think it's it's uh, uh, 50 minutes of good used time to to, to see that uh, it shows much more difference without speaking of the speaker you, uh, the the dances and the songs show the difference and the uh, uh, difference of the tradition of this country going back to the Banja Luka ethno days there was um, a guest ensemble from Sarajevo that turned up not wearing I, I was I, I will be honest I was shocked I thought what is this ball gowns gentlemen dressed uh, as they would have done in the start of the 20th century yeah. a bit of a waltz a bit of a colo a bit of a mishmash to be honest for me um, and I turned around to the people that were with me and I, I said, what is this? And they went, haven't got a clue, never seen this before. Um, then I'm looking through your YouTube channel and I'm going, hang on, they're, they're doing the same. Yeah. Now, I need the expert to explain to me so I can explain to other people. From my outsider's point of view, it looked like it was a combination of traditional folklore and an import of Austro-Hungarian culture, and the two had fused together. Am I right? Am I wrong? Uh, you you could be a uh, cooper you could cooperate with our ensemble as, <laughs> as a very uh, merely professional uh, in in this area. Uh, you said it exactly as as you should. Uh, there was an influence, of course, in that. Uh, type of and that part of our history of uh, some Austro-Hungarian dances let's say we say this here it's very often to see uh, to hear uh, Vienna dance or Vienna sings uh, from, from Vienna actually yes the, the, um, in that period was uh, as we had uh, of course years after that some uh, influence of the of the Western uh, culture uh, these type of dances, as we saw, we, we call them uh, city dances, like dances from the city. Uh, you can say that uh, that is a part of our tradition. That is just a moment uh, when uh, somebody uh, thought that's interesting to keep alive, and that was at the maybe King's uh, Ball or something like that in that period. And we don't have too much of these uh, choreographies. Maybe one choreography, every ensemble has one choreography because you don't have some special type of steps that you can make five or six choreographies. It's not that rich as our culture and our uh, types of, of uh, choreographies. Uh, it stood on our repertoire also, as you, say, you saw that from the colleagues of Sarajevo, uh, with some differences, but not too much differences, of course, beside the steps, because it's, not, it's a foreign Actually, it's a foreign. We accepted that in some type of, uh, uh, in some period, actually, of... of uh, Would we... I'm going to interrupt here. Yeah. W would that actually have happened in somewhere like the Bansky Dvor back in the day? Would it... Sorry. Would they actually have danced something like that in, in the Bansky Dvor all, yeah. those, all those decades ago? Uh, yes, they, they would. They would. The Bansky Dvor is a good environment of, uh, for that. You said it well. Because the Bansky Dvor is made in that period when that was uh, popular, let's say. Of course, I think here it came from or from Zagreb or from Belgrade as a big center in that period of uh, Kraljevina Yugoslavia. Uh, but the cultural center of Bansky Dvor is uh, very often a good environment to perform these dances and we do it. We do it in some special occasions when there are some, um, hmm, how to explain that, uh, balls or, or, or special uh, uh, political happenings or meetings or something like that where they don't want to see traditional dances, which I think it's wrong. I think that we should show the traditional, 
But they say, okay, we want to be <laughs> uh, Mr. and Mrs. on a high level. Uh, we don't quite like to be uh, village people. And okay, sometimes we dance that. Uh, we don't use it very often, to be honest to say, because I don't think that's uh, our tradition. Even we have that on our repertoire for 30 or 40 years. But it's not by some village from Bosnia and Herzegovina. It came maybe from Austria or from Hungary. I, accept, I accept that and I uh, respect that. But I think the most important thing for us is to, to uh, show the, the, to the world uh, the ninety percent of uh, our repertoire that we have from from uh, west to the south uh, of our country. You mentioned earlier about um, things have changed now. Um, love it or hate it, social media has had a massive impact on the way that we consume um, uh, information, and it's providing obstacles now, uh, especially. Uh, as far as culture is concerned. Um, we were talking a little earlier uh, uh, over some domestic coffee here um, about s some of the challenges. What do you think for people like you, not only across Bosnia-Herzegovina but across the region that work with ensembles, what are the, the challenges now that you face? You did mention that maybe one way is to professionalise um, folklore is that the way forward or, or do you f think there might be another way of keeping this culture rich and at the forefront of people's minds instead of as a secondary thought uh, that's very often question to say uh, even uh, which, I, which I ask myself first of all uh, what how it will be in the future, what is the future of this job. Uh, of course, uh, there is a reason why the situation is not so good as it used to be. Uh, first of all, uh, some uh, law, let's say, or laws uh, are not made uh, good enough to take care about this uh, area, uh, which we try to change in this period. Uh, the thing is that uh, in the beginning you had maybe five or ten or ten ensembles that were good enough. Uh, then you have situation if two dancers uh, make arguing with their choreographer or with the director of the ensemble, they say, "Oh, I won't be a part anymore. I go to make a new one," uh, and they go and to make new one. And through the years, uh, there are there there appeared a lot of ensembles very easily, you know. So uh, that wasn't positive enough because the budget was the same, but the number of the ensembles are using it uh, uh, increased. Uh, so uh, for me, uh, the best way to keep the representative representative ensemble is to make the professional ensemble. There are many reasons for that. If you make at least one professional ensemble, of course you have one top ensemble, which is, there is no doubt about the quality and the keeping tradition. But after that you can use those people uh, to be hired in the other uh, ensembles that are not professional, but they will bring uh, part of the professional uh, job to these uh, smaller ensembles. Uh, and the other, uh, as we mentioned, uh, it, it should be arranged with the, with the ministries of the culture and the, and the uh, school, yeah, uh, to make at least uh, one once a week to have a class at the schools of the of the tradition topic. Let's say about that. Um, so I think the best way for the future is to me to make one. One at least one republic ensemble, uh, but to support these that are not, uh, I mean, uh, which are smaller groups, to uh, support them at the right way. But the, it's very important to make the law uh, on that way that it's not possible so easy to make the new ensemble. You know, you shouldn't just lead it to 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 appear every day new one. That's the problem. Uh, I hope it will be uh, finished in some moment in the next few years. We are trying to do that and uh, uh, I think we will succeed. Finally, as I look around all these cups, medals, trophies, 
it's quite it's it's very very impressive Nemanja you cannot see everything because some of them are <laughs> <laughs> I know <laughs> I know um finally when you come to work every day when you finished a hard evenings work seeing the ensemble performing on stage and everybody's been clapped and they're exhausted because yeah it is a very very physical activity your mind must like most people just wander off into a dream of wow this is what i want to achieve next this is where i want to be in 10 years where do you want to be in 10 years well i i made some steps in 5 years in 10 years and 15 years <laughs> of course uh, uh for me uh the target is when i leave from one day when i leave maslesha i don't know it will happen in 5 or 10 years or 20 years maybe before my retirement but uh my task is to uh make something uh, after myself that wasn't here when i came here uh to be honest completely for me uh, the greatest task would be uh, to make the professional ensemble or at least half professional which is also po- possible possible uh professional ensemble after i leave after i leave or retire or something like that because uh, maslesha is the most successful ensemble because we always were thinking about i want to leave something after after me here we were not like okay i will do something for my own uh, usage you know no i just want to be as much as possible professional to keep everything we we built until now but to make a new step uh, and a new task for somebody who will come after me uh, i really hope that will be possible to make my uh, target or, or dream true i would be very very proud of myself uh, if my name would be remembered here in this uh, in the history of this ensemble as a, somebody who made a big big thing for the ensembles as some success uh, some people before me because uh, this ensemble wasn't like this uh, from its beginning it was steps and steps and years of building it and everybody had his own era let's say in ensembles because people who were working here they were not here like uh, one or two years they were mostly like 10 15 20 uh, you met mr luka medar he was like i i like to say he's mr he's sir alex ferguson of master <laughs> <laughs> he is for 26 years here he was here for 26 years and made great things of course and even in the tough period of the war uh, we were not we, we never stopped working we we always were working Uh, so uh, one day I want to 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 live after myself uh, half professional or completely professional ensemble.